This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It sure is great having you join me here in these online lessons. This is lesson 28 in this mini course on finger picking. We're almost to the end. Only two more lessons left after this one. So we've covered a lot of ground and done a lot of different patterns. In this lesson, we're going to build on what we did in the last lesson by moving string sets with our thumb, index, and middle fingers. But we're going to do a slightly different pattern. So let's take a look at it. So we have thumb, middle, index. We're in 4 4 time. We're in each one of the beats though it has a triplet, so one end, a two end, a three end, a four end, a, and they look identical as far as thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. And you might be thinking, wait, a couple lessons ago we did this exact thing, and we did, only in that uh, lesson we kept the middle and index fingers stationary on the top two strings and we moved our thumb. And in this lesson, we are going to move our thumb, index, and middle for each one of these groups. So our whole hand is going to be moving string sets or different groups of strings, different string groupings. We're going to move that for each of the beats. So let's go ahead and dive in on it. First, let's just review that pattern. We can do it on an E chord because we don't need our left hand, but we're going to put our index finger on the second string and our middle on the top string. And we just go thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, like that, easy as, as can be. So, as we work through this, and we'll start with the A chord, we're going to actually be moving our index and middle fingers around too. So, our thumb plucks, the very first thing it plucks on this first beat is the bass note, and that is on the fifth string for the A chord. Index and middle are going to be positioned on the fourth and the third strings, fourth and third strings. The middle is going to pluck the third string, and the fourth is going to pluck or the index is going to pluck the four strings. So for A, the first beat, we go thumb, middle, index. Fifth string, third string, fourth string. You can just get comfortable with that. Then for beat two, everything moves up a string. So we're going to go four, two, three, thumb, middle, index, but our whole hand is moved up to the next set of three strings. Then for beat three, we move up again, to the top three strings, thumb plucks three, middle plucks top, and index plucks two. So we've got that up there and you can be comfortable there. Then for beat four, we go back lower on the strings, thumb's going to pluck the fourth string, middle plucks second, and index is going to pluck the third. It sounds like NBC in that particular voicing. So we'll be moving for each of the beats just like we did in the last and only this time we're going thumb, middle, index. So you can get comfortable with A. This is how we do it for any of the chords that use the top five strings that have that root on the fifth string. Then for E, let's look at E next. For E, our sixth string, our low sixth string is where the bass is. So for the first one, we're going to have thumb plucking that low sixth string on this first beat. Middle still plucks the third string and index still plucks the fourth string. So it's a little different in that regard between this, the chords that have the root on the sixth string and the chords that have the root on the fifth string. That initial pluck with the thumb is going to be on one of those two strings, depending on which one is the bass note of the chord. But the rest is the same. Middle is still going to pluck third, and index is still going to pluck fourth. So you can keep comfortable there. From, the, from then on, it's the same as it was for the A chord. We go four, two, three, and then three, one, two, and then back to four, two, three. So. which is on 
and just the top four strings, we have to do it slightly different for any chord that's just on the top four strings. And that especially happens to us on the D chord. That's the only one that we have in first position that can only be done that way unless we were to use a bar chord version or something like, like the C bar chord. We could create a D and do it with five strings. But when we're just doing our normal D there in first position. Then we're going to go 4, 2, 3, first beat. 3, 1, 2, second beat, back to 4, 2, 3, third beat, and then 5, 3, 4 on that last beat. Okay, so it starts out 4, 2, 3, so we're on string 4 with our thumb, and then index is on that third string, middle is on the second, but we go thumb, middle, index, so we're there, easy. For beat 2, we're going to move up to the high three strings, so strings one, two, and three, thumb plucks third, middle plucks top, index plucks second, thumb, middle, index, we get that NBC again. So that's beat two, then we go back to where we just were on strings four, two, and three, so back there, and then we're going to take everything lower, so we're going to go five, three, four, so you get comfortable there. So if we did this whole thing, we start out four, two, three, three, one, two, four, two, three, five, three, four. So P M I P M I P M I P M I. And you get comfortable with that D chord. do this progression then, we'll do two times per chord, starting out on the A chord. Here we go. One and a, two and a, ready and a, go and a, A. One time per chord. So one measure per chord. One and a, two and a, ready and a, go and a. As I mentioned in the last lesson, if you want to work more than just the index and middle fingers, you could alternatively use ring middle or ring index and work the other combinations that are possible. And if we need a pattern in 3-4 time instead of 4-4 time or 9-8 instead of 12-8, we can just take off that last beat. So like A. If you wanted something for 6-8 or 2-4, you could just take off the second half or actually just alternate measures 1-2.
This kind of pattern wouldn't work necessarily the best if you had more than one cord per bar, but it actually isn't that bad either because you can just do one half, uh, the first half twice for each of the cords. So it, it really works out okay. Okay, so that wraps us up for this lesson. I hope you're having a lot of fun playing the guitar. It sure is great. I sure do enjoy it. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about creating variations. So we're approaching the end of this mini course. So in that next lesson, I'm going to go over how you can create some variations from the different types of patterns that we've gone over in this mini course. So it's going to be great. I hope you're having fun. Take care. We'll see you in that next one. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.